so fun. It's not the fastest car in the world, but it does give you that feeling once you step on it. It's just the driving experience and knowing what you're driving is just, I feel like Maserati hasn't lost that in a sense. All right, you guys ready? You ready? Maserati music. I don't even think, it's normally louder than that. I think I jipped you on the sound. What's up guys? So it is Ron's Rides. Um, another afternoon drive here where I'm kind of just talking about um, subjects that deal with cars, normally Maserati and Alfa Romeo news. Um, since that's what a lot of my channel is based around. Um, I'm in my Ghibli right now. So we're going for a little drive. Um, I wanted to first off really quick so I don't talk you guys' ear off. Um, thanks to everybody for subscribing. Um, I do very amateur videos, so it's nothing that is very, I guess, um, reviewer focused or knowledge based. It's just kind of my own thoughts from what I've experienced and what um, I come across being an owner of one of the cars and being close to a lot of the cars and having relationships with them. So it's cool to see that everybody, um, you know, likes to follow and whether they like to follow just to see what kind of video I'll come out with next or whether they're really engaged and they, you know, want to have a conversation or learn something. Very nice to see that. So I think as of right now, recording this video, a little bit over 1,400 subscribers. So really cool to see. Um, so thanks for you guys to tune in and hopefully I can bring some more content for you guys that will either make you love the channel or hate it um, in your own way. Uh, whichever way I definitely want to, um, you know, just be able to provide entertainment, um, knowledge and conversation to um, the, the channel with Maserati Alfa Romeo because I know a lot of people aren't talking about the cars as much as, um, you know, we would. and and. You know, I got. I want to provide that outlet. So thanks again. Um, so this topic is Maserati um, and Alfa Romeo. So you know they're part of the FCA Fiat, Fiat Chrysler Auto Group, and everybody knows that because that's what they bash the cars on. Um, you know, Ferrari was also part of the Fiat um, Chrysler Auto Group as well. You know, because they bought them out. Um, Ferrari has been released from that for the past year or so. They are their own standalone, you know, even though the FCA still owns part of the company, um, they are their own standalone brand. Now, FCA has been recently in some debt problems, I think $7 billion in debt. And rumors are going around that they might be selling off Maserati and Alfa Romeo to pay their debts. Now, it's just speculation. So, with that being something that's in the talks possibly um, or somewhat hypothetical I kind of want to know what you guys would think on one who would pick up the companies if they were to sell them who's the best candidate to uh, buy these and um, two if they would survive being in a new company or being standalone companies um, one of my things with Maserati is it doesn't have I guess uh, the momentum that Alfa Romeo has right now um, you know Maserati's momentum came with the Levante um, but it came and went and I know that the Levante is doing really well and sells right now and it's doing really well for Maserati but everybody right now and it might be marketing everybody's talking about the Julia they're talking about the Quadrifoglio they're really talking about the Stelvio um, and the Stelvio Quadrifoglio. And the Stelvio is set to hit any time now. We'll have one in the deal, or they will have one in the dealership here in Daytona. It's supposed to come within the next week or so, if not, you know, a few days. And I'll be the first one. Um, I know I took you back in my other videos to um, a few, few, well, it was a while back, um, but I showed you the first Stelvio that was here in the US doing its tour. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of hype behind that and it's coming hard because everybody loves the Julia. Everybody adores the Quadrifoglio. It's a, a, a great car, an amazing car, and it's getting a lot of praise. And they can't keep those on the lot. You know, they've sold all of them that they've had. I think they've gotten five and they go. 
Um, and now the Stelvio is coming, and then you know, shortly after, you're gonna have the Stelvio, Stelvio Quadrifoglio. You know, Maz or Alfa Romeo can it, it can survive doing its own thing. They they've done a good job with that. Maserati, on the other hand, has a, a long-standing, rich racing history, and was at the top of their game at one point. To you know, where I mean. Um, Ferrari was formed off of Maserati because Maserati was big in the um, um, motorsports, and I'm pretty sure Enzo um, was, was he working with or racing with uh, Maserati. Now, don't get me um, get, get me too uh, caught up on the facts here. You guys might know a lot better. This is off the top of my head. I've, I've read this somewhere before, but um, yeah, Maserati was or uh, Ferrari was formed off of Maserati, and also off of uh, Lamborghini because of course oh no sorry 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 I got that wrong Lamborghini was formed off of Ferrari um, because Lam Mr. Lamborghini himself uh, wasn't getting sold to Ferrari so I, I think it was a specific Ferrari and he went and formed his own company Lamborghini but I'm pretty sure Ferrari got formed off of Maserati either way is what I'm saying is they were on the same playing field they were sister companies um, you know, the MC12 is the Enzo, you know, they're the same thing, um, you know, and when you could mention them both in the same sentence and, you know, it would be equals. Um, right now, it's not that way, you know, um, Maserati has really gone down as far as that goes, um, and, and, and value, and, you know, I think a lot of the appeal of Maserati you know, the past years has been, they've been connected to the Ferrari dealerships. So it's Ferrari Maserati, just like the one in Orlando. Um, and right now they're correct. They're connected to the Alfa Romeo dealerships, you know, so they, they're, they're tag teaming, you know, you, you get that buzz with, you know, the Ferrari and the Maserati or the Alfa and the Maserati, you know, they're a team, not anymore. So, you know, with that said, say if they do split off, now you're not selling, um, you know, Maseratis in, in Alfa Romeo buildings as well, you know, then you split off from Ferrari as well because I don't think they're building new Maserati buildings with Ferrari anymore because Ferrari is not, you know, a big part of the FCA. So then what happens when you just have a standalone Maserati building and it's just a Maserati dealership. It's just Maserati doing its thing, you know, like without any help. What happens there? Or what happens if Volkswagen buys it? Or what happens if Audi buys it? You know, are they going to be able to give Maserati what they need? Because a lot of people feel like the FCA has hurt Maserati's brand and brought it down in value and has cheapened the brand and then making the Ghibli has cheapened the brand you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is, what is it gonna take for Maserati to excel as a company? Is the FCA gonna have to sell it? Is somebody else gonna have to buy it? And who is gonna have to buy it? You know, who, who really is going to do Maserati the justice and get the brand back to where it needs to be or do you feel like it already is where it needs to be you know am I just talking out of my ass you know but this is a this is a thing Maserati might be sold Alpha might be sold I think Alpha will do good no matter where it's at right now because it has the proper momentum um, you know but Maserati I can't say you know so the next few years to come what's gonna happen to the brand and is it gonna be good or bad depending on who picks it up um, I definitely want to know like I said sorry for rambling and talking your ears off um, I do want to get a couple of takeoffs and stuff for you guys um, so it's not just me talking a bunch so I'm gonna do that for you really quick and hopefully you enjoy that thanks for sticking around this long so now hopefully here's your treat <laughs>
turbos will spool up. Alright guys, let's try this again with the window down. Alright, here we go. I don't know if you can see the focus on my face. You know, it just, all my other cars I've ever had never gave me that kind of rush when I stepped on the pedal, you know? I know people say, get BMW, get Audi, Mercedes. Now you get an AMG, Mercedes, it's a little different story. But just the sound, the feeling, like, hitting the pedals, I was just, watch. And the thing is, I'm not even, I'm not even flooring it. So it's just so fun. It's not the fastest car in the world, but it does give you that feeling once you step on it. It's just the driving experience and knowing what you're driving is just, I feel like Maserati hasn't lost that in a sense. You guys be the judge by the expressions on my face. It's no better than that. With that said, guys, um, hopefully I can hear a lot in the comments because I want to be um, kind of schooled on this stuff and I want to know what you guys think, uh, what I said, um, you know, it, did it make any sense because I'm, I'm trying to relay, you know, the information to you guys and then just have you work with it and see what you want to say about it and have a conversation, um, you know, what does Maserati need to to bring the brand up?